Um, <coughs> what branch of the service is this? Marines. Yeah, to say Marines anywhere up there. Um, symbols and badges, logos do represent things, but at some point in time they transcend them. Transcend them. The Nike swoosh. You don't see need to see Nike anymore. You don't need to see Marines anymore. Uh, what brand is that? Lexus. Lexus. Okay, so there's a car company that rips off Lexus all the time. Do you, anybody know who they are? They rip off their designs. They also rip off uh, Mercedes-Benz designs. Hyundai. Hyundai. Yeah. Now, oh, okay. All right. This is a Hyundai, and, and if you set it next to uh, an LS450, it look they look very similar. Even down to the grills are very similar. Hyundai does that. But if you see that Hyundai badge on the back of that car, how much will you pay for it versus the, the Lexus badge on the back of that car? Well, the factory is about double for that same car. And it's actually, the Hyundai car is a very good car. Um, it's just that that badge is worth something. This is a nine-year-old's set of badges. <laughs> uh, I know this kid. He's my partner's son. Uh, that's, he's nine years old. This is what he's accumulated. Uh, are we a society of badges where everyone gets an award, right? These, most of those are participation medals. Uh, we're a society of badges that have become to define us. Uh, rituals is a, an important part of brands. Uh, every strong brand has a ritual. Uh, LeBron James is a strong brand. This is LeBron here. He does this before every game. It's his personal brand. It's not even his team's brand. Grab a handful of chalk and make magic. Uh, one of our clients is the Special Olympics of Colorado. We took that, that ritual uh, that of athletes. Athletes sign autographs. Athletes wear bling. And applied it to real athletes. These are kids are real athletes um, that, that compete in the Special Olympics Olympics. Um, again, it's, 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 it's part belief system. It's part badges. It's part you know, the ritual of the brand. Uh, everybody's favorite ritual. Uh, Starbucks has done an awesome job of, of making us crave rituals around the holidays by creating these special products and then taking them off the market. I'm not sure uh, McDonald has been as successful with McRib, but they do that too with McRib as a ritual. Um, every strong brand has a language associated with it. Uh, anybody know what that says? I was hoping somebody did. I don't know. Um, but every strong brand does. Uh, one of our clients when we first started the company was Peaberry. Peaberry was started, uh, the, you know, and their, and their story, their brand story, their DNA was founded by a Colorado rancher. So kind of that rancher wisdom is part of their language. You know, goosebumps are the human body's feeble attempt to grow fur. That's something a cowboy says. So all their marketing, in fact, if anybody knows Baxter Black, a famous cowboy poet, he did all, all our radio spots. And if we knew we were going to have sound today, I would have played a few of those because they're, they're, they're pretty darn funny. Uh, but that's kind of that cowboy wisdom mm. that's part of their language as a brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens if your brand is Breckenridge Ski Area and you're trying to attract a new bunch of skiers to it because you've been framed as just a family place? Well, you use a different set of language to talk to those people. Now, this would really offend a lot of people, and it did. Um, it also created the, their best season in their history of, of their, because it attracted the people they wanted to attract. You can use language to help change your brand. It didn't exist for a second season, uh, but it got a lot of attention. You have to have detractors. Strong brands always have detractors. Uh, anybody remember these guys? And then, of course, this famous quote, I refuse to join a club that would have me as a member. Uh, strong detractors really set your brand apart. Um, don't be afraid of them. Use them. Um, I, I, this is one of Greg's ads that he did years back, but it's, it's a, a really great example. Uh, Rolls-Royce says the leather they reject is used in $1,000 handbags. That was right out of an ad for Rolls-Royce. The leather that Acura uses is used in Rolls-Royce. The ones that they reject is used in Rolls-Royce. Again having some detractors to set yourself apart. Uh, Stetson is one of our clients. Stetson has a real problem. Uh, what is Stetson? Hats. Hats. Okay, if, how many people here are under 35? <laughs> uh, what is Stetson to you? I don't even know. 
you're probably under 25, aren't you? <laughs> uh, that, that this, the research says if you're under 35, Stetson's a clone because Tom Brady hawks it at, used to hawk it at Christmas. Uh, if you're under 25, what's a Stetson? Um, people don't know. And, and frankly, if you look at the, the covers of album covers for country western music, uh, the top 10 artists don't wear hats anymore. And there's only one of the top 10 artists that wears a cowboy hat anymore. They invented the cowboy hat. So they have to appeal to a whole new generation by, with their brand by having some detractors. And frankly, their detractors are their core, the people that are buying the old felt hat. So to connect to, to a younger audience, we have to really do it in a different way than they've been doing historically. Right now we do it with a series of, of online music competitions around the country. Uh, we've had uh, concerts at, at military bases all over the country. Uh, but it's really uh, attracting a new audience, the youth audience, to that brand. And something about a lifestyle brand, not a hat or a boot or, because Stetson produces hats, boots, cologne, uh, Pretty, pretty soon, uh, a whiskey, um, shirts, clothing, the whole works, Western clothing. How many people are Stetson? How many does it take to do that? It's a trick question. There are seven people in New York City that manage that brand. They license it out to a bunch of other people, uh, which is not an unusual model. They manage the brand and the quality of the products, but it doesn't take very many people to do that. So. Th Unfortunately, they lost control of their brand a few years back, and we're helping them try to get it back. A figurehead, Steve Jobs is the figurehead for if he can affect stock value, although it didn't hurt him so much this time. It only went down a couple of points uh, yesterday. Uh, but it, the, the previous time when they announced he had cancer, uh, it, it took a huge whack. Is that not part of the brand? Uh, anybody know who this character is? Gustavo Dudamel. Probably the, the in the in the uh, uh, orchestral arts world, he is the he is the dude right now. In fact, they call him the dude, dude Mel. Um, he he's the conductor for the L.A. Philharmonic. Um, he is the figurehead. He without him as the conductor, this is a very good world class Philharmonic. They would just be another Philharmonic, unfortunately, uh, in the, in today's world. But he really makes a difference. If you get a chance, go to a theater when they do some live. The next one will be in March. See him do it live from the from the from the uh, if you like orchestra from the the player's point of view. You get to see great camera angles live uh, from the L.A. Philharmonic and the Disney Concert Hall. They're clients, so go and see them. Uh, figureheads also can be inanimate objects. Uh, we see it all the time. Uh, this was something we created. We took the people off the pedestrian signs around. Um, around Lowry and brought them to life to introduce one of the new neighborhoods in Lowry that has a very walkable component to it. So imagine during our sales events, you're, you're seeing these people interact all over the street. We had a few of these people around uh, to talk about how, you know, that, that this is to really reinforce the point of being a pedestrian neighborhood. And then finally, every good brand has a gathering place and that can be a virtual gathering place also, but every strong brand, I mean, Starbucks built their, their whole brand around this idea. You had this third place experience at, a, at their store. Uh, it became a gathering place. Um, for Stetson, that, that gathering place today is, is online. That's where most of the activity about the brand occurs today. You don't see very many ads. We, won't do, we hardly do any ads for Stetson. We do a lot of social media, a lot of online engagement to get people to interact on our website or on our Facebook page. Uh, what has Apple done within, with their brand? Again, their stores, I mean, uh, has anybody been into a new IBM store yet? It looks a lot like this for some reason. Um, uh, they have created a real gathering place where people go and play with the toys, uh, experience that digital lifestyle. They don't have to buy it. In fact, most of their sales don't come from their stores. So. Why, look at those nine different things. Why even bother? Well, obviously the easiest, easiest thing to say, it helps you stand out, but there's, there's, there's always the strength of uh, somebody can undercut you. A strong brand can overcome that. Time and time again, a strong brand, like a Starbucks uh, or 
or um, a Lexus. Uh, somebody can come do it faster, cheaper, and better, but people are still going to have demand for your brand. That goes with communities, too. Um, I think Lowry has done, over the years, has done a great job of creating a, a perception uh, and a reality that, that, that there's kind of the best of the old, best of the new there in a lot of cases. Um, they've commanded a pretty premium price now compared to Stapleton in a lot of respects. Part of that's because they've been around for a while. But again, the this strength of the brand around this idea that it is all these different components. It's going to restart me one of these times. Um, all these different components really helps insulate against that. Uh, yep. Loyalists will follow without question. Um, uh, how many people here have the ritual of stopping at a, at a Starbucks every morning? How many people admit it? <laughs> I, I, in, in, in 60 people, that's uh, somebody's lying. <laughs> uh, people will pay more for parity. How much do we pay for water today? Um, more than we pay for gasoline. It's crazy. So, yes, you can distinguish yourself uh, with those dime attributes. Um, Pure, this is our business card, or will be our business card when they get printed. Um, uh, what, anybody know what that little code is up in the, next to Jerry's name up there? It's 2D barcode, so if you have a phone with a camera on it, you can take a picture of that 2D barcode. It'll launch uh, a mini site that has all the contact information for that person. It'll direct link to their website, a V card to download into your, your phone immediately instead of going back to your office and having to hand enter it all in. Pretty cool stuff. Um, but since digital, kind of for our brand, digital crosses over everything we do as a company, uh, whether it's public relations or advertising or social media, whatever, digital has a component to it. It's, it's part of our brand right now. It's one of our symbols within the company. Um, if anybody has a phone right now, you can take a picture of that and get all my contact information. And I doubt anybody will do that. No one's done it yet. Uh, there's the more traditional stuff. If you do want to contact me, have questions about any of this, ask them now or ask them later in the Q&A part or take down some information and give me a shout later. <laughs>